everybody. This is Alan and welcome to another Doctor Who review. And today I'm going to be reviewing the 42nd Doctor Who story, Fury from the Deep, starring Patrick Troughton as the second Doctor. Now, Fury from the Deep is a lost Doctor Who story. It's six episodes long. All six episodes are lost from the BBC archives. <laughs> Great. But luckily, the audio from the story does survive, and so my review is based on the audio version of Fury from the Deep, which you can download for a very affordable price, either from audible.com or from iTunes. And basically the gist of this story is that the Doctor and his two companions, Jamie and Victoria, are having a little trek down the English seaside uh, at the beach, just having some fun at the beach one uh, sunny day, when all of a sudden they come across a gas pipe that's uh, connected to the beach, and the Doctor, out of curiosity, he inspects the gas pipe using a stethoscope, and he hears what he thinks is a heartbeat coming from the gas pipe. Before the Doctor can do any further investigation, he and Jamie and Victoria are taken prisoner by the, uh, the security people who work at the nearby gas rig by the beach. And as the Doctor tries to explain himself and, and his two companions, basically it comes to light, slowly but surely, that there's some mysterious alien creature, some unseen mysterious alien creature that seems to be able to control seawater and seems to have control of the uh, the sea foam and the control of the seaweed in the water and any human that comes in contact with this foam and seawater gets taken over by the creature their minds get taken over by this this mysterious unseen water creature in the water and and the sea foam and uh, one by one the uh, crew of the gas rig get taken over by this mysterious unseen sea creature and of course it's up to the doctor and his companions Jamie and Victoria to stop it. And that's basically the plot of Fury from the Deep, more or less. Fury from the Deep! Well, I must say, it really, really, really makes me angry that this wonderful Doctor Who story is lost from the BBC archives, uh, because just listening to the audio version of Fury from the Deep. I think this is a wonderful story, and quite possibly this could be one of the very best stories from Patrick Troughton's era. I just wish I could know for sure, if only I could see it, you know? But um, again, it's, it's a tragedy, I think, that Fury from the Deep was wiped completely, but um, at least the soundtrack of the story survives, which is better than nothing. At least we can still listen to the story. And listening to Fury from the Deep, I was very, very uh, captivated by it. I think uh, it's a wonderful story just, just by listening to it. Again, it's a tragedy that it's not at the BBC, but I implore you to, uh, to get the audio version of Fury from the Deep, so at least you can enjoy it that way. I think it tells a really great, scary story. I mean, what I really love about Fury from the from the Deep is, is the intensity of it, the fear factor that's in there. I mean, you really do feel, just by listening to the story, you, you really do feel the menace of this unseen water creature. And the fact that it, it can take over any human that comes in contact with it, and the humans can, can spread the gas just by, you know, like, like blowing. <laughs> On, on nearby people. Yeah, bad breath. <laughs> I mean, there's this classic photograph of, uh, of a character called Mr. Quill, who's basically spreading the gas. He's attacking somebody, and then this, this photograph, he's... I'll do my Mr. Quill impression for you. He looks like this. <laughs> you know, spreading the gas. Um, but anyway, I think that's one of the things that I really love about Fury from the Deep. Again, there's nothing to see. I can only listen to this story. But again, I just think that the fear is there. The tension is there. The menace is there of this unseen uh, water creature. And um, I just think it's a wonderfully written story. Wonderfully acted, uh, just listening to the actors' performances in this story. The acting in it is great. Um, the music score... For this story. Very, very appropriately eerie. I mean, I loved it. I mean, really, really great, uh, scary kind of music. I also have to give credit to uh, Fraser Hines, who also plays uh, the, the companion Jamie, that his narration in the story is really, really wonderful, as he tells you what's going on in the story. Um, really great narration from Fraser Hines. And um, yeah, I think it's wonderful. It just makes me so angry. I can't actually watch the story because I want to watch it so very much. Yes, uh, Patrick Troughton as the second Doctor, he's great in the story. Very, very wonderful. I mean, he's always wonderful as the Doctor, of course. Fraser Hines as Jamie, he's great. And of course, uh, Deborah Watling, the very cute Deborah Watling as Victoria. 
What makes it all the more upsetting that Fury from the Deep is no longer in the BBC archives is because this is the final Doctor Who story with Victoria. Why the bleep would the BBC wipe this story knowing damn well that this is the final story with Victoria? Well, obviously, they just didn't care. They, they, I mean, look, I'll give the BBC folks, you know, you know, I will say in their favor, they just didn't realize at the time that there would one day be a huge demand uh, for the Doctor Who series overseas and in all parts of the world, you know, the, that the home video market was going to make Doctor Who a very, very on-demand uh, TV series. I understand that. I know I keep bitching in every single one of these Doctor Who review videos whenever they, they wipe the story, but I mean, it is, it is upsetting. It's upsetting that Fury from the Deep is gone because this is the final story with Victoria. Deborah Watling takes her leave from the Doctor and takes her leave from the Doctor Who series with this story. And uh, Deborah Watling, wonderful performance in this story, although I think she's a, she's a little on the wishy-washy side because actually one of my only criticisms of Fury from the Deep, again, only by listening to it, is that Victoria, she does a little bit too much complaining in the story about how unhappy she is, how tired she is, you know, traveling with the Doctor and, and Jamie, and, and how she's basically tired of all the danger that she has to face on a regular basis uh, traveling with the Doctor and Jamie. I mean, she starts complaining, I think, as early as episode two, and I don't know, it's, it's, it's a bit much, because from that moment on, it's like every single episode she's, she's complaining in some portion of the episode about, oh, I'm so tired, you know, everywhere we go is danger, and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, she's definitely dropping hints that she's probably not going to stay with the Doctor and Jamie for very much longer. It's, it's my personal opinion that I think maybe they should have held off on Victoria starting to complain until maybe episode four or five, maybe, at the earliest, because I just think it's a bit much. I just think it's a little bit much. Um, and then, of course, we get to the end of the story when Victoria finally says her goodbyes, and even that feels to me to be a little bit drawn out, you know, because there's this one big scene where she's telling the doctor and Jamie that, she, you know, she, she wants to leave, and then that's followed by a final scene with the surviving gas rig workers, so there's a whole big scene with them. Then we go back to Victoria having some, some final chit-chat with Jamie about her decision to leave, and then finally we get to the last scene when she finally does leave, and she winds up staying with, with the, uh, the the couple in this story known as uh, the Harrises, Frank Harris and Maggie Harris. She stays behind in the care of, of the Harrises. Although at the very end, it is indeed a very nice, heartfelt goodbye, but I just think Victoria's farewell from the series with the story is a little bit dry drawn out. Just, just the goodbye part of, of, of Victoria's tale. It's just, it's, it feels a little drawn out. It feels kind of like padding to me. Like they ran out of script and they had to write some extra, you know, an extra two or three scenes of Victoria saying goodbye in order to fill up the final episode. But nonetheless, it's still a nice farewell for Victoria. However, drawn out. And I must say for Deborah Watling, you know, she was a wonderful Doctor Who companion, very, very cute, maybe a little too wishy-washy and <gasps> in some of her stories, not all of them. Like I said, in Tomb of the Cybermen, she got to pick up a gun and shoot a Cybermat. <laughs> so way to go, Victoria. But there's no question about that uh, Deborah Watling was very, very good and very, very cute as Victoria. You certainly care about Victoria. You you, you always care about Victoria and uh, you, you want her to be safe. So so it's sad to see her go, but I guess it was simply her time to go. You know, one season was it for Victoria. So Deborah Watling, mwah, you were wonderful as Victoria. As far as the supporting people go, it's kind of hard to pick out supporting characters when I can only listen to them rather than see them, but uh, I'll, I'll mention uh, Victor Mattern as Robson. He's like the uh, gas rig leader who's basically, he's just, he's just a jerk. He's just yelling all the time and barking orders. <laughs> all the time but uh but i do think his performance here is uh, is very very powerful you know he definitely leaves a, a impression on me as a listener and i did see that one photograph of him that one surviving photo of fury from the deep there's several surviving photos from fury for the deep but that one particular photo of him where he's just totally covered in foam in that room just just cover 
I mean, obviously the foam was, was I guess, soap bubbles, but anyway, he's just totally covered in foam, and that's certainly a, a very strong image, even though it's just a photograph rather than a video clip. But anyway, I did think his performance was very, very good in this, uh, Victor Mattern as uh, Robson. I like Roy Spencer and June Murphy as the Harrises. I also like Margaret John as Megan Jones, who I guess is another one of the head uh, gas rig workers who comes in, and uh, she's very good. She's very uh, assertive as uh, as uh, Megan Jones. Again, the actress's name is uh, Margaret John. The rest of the, the supporting cast are all very good, but, but that's basically the uh, supporting players who stand out for me. So basically, yeah, that's it. Fury from the Deep is great, great Doctor Who, and I also want to give credit to the author of Fury from the Deep, Victor Pemberton, who I not sure I ever wrote for Doctor Who ever again, but uh, way to go, Victor. Excellent Doctor Who story you wrote here. Fury from the Deep. Great, great Doctor Who story. It is a tragedy that this story is lost from the BBC archives. It is potentially one of the very best stories in the Patrick Troughton era, uh, although I think we will only know for sure one day if Fury from the Deep is ever finally recovered, and I really do hope and pray that this story is recovered. At the very least, we can listen to it, which is better than nothing, but... Still, I hope and pray that Fury from the Deep will be found. Just listening to it, great classic Doctor Who story, very tension-filled, uh, very exciting to listen to, and um, yeah, I think it's wonderful. Definitely one of the best, and certainly one of the scariest Doctor Who stories from the Patrick Troughton era. So, thumbs up all the way on Fury from the Deep. And that's my review of Fury from the Deep. Next time on Doctor Who Review, I will be reviewing the 43rd Doctor Who story, The Wheel in Space, which features the return of the Cybermen and the introduction of brand new companion, Zoe! Cute Zoe, played by Wendy Padbury. Me love her so. Wendy Padbury as Zoe, the brand new companion on Doctor Who. The Wheel in Space! Next time on Doctor Who Review, this is Alan. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.